Someone to Love on your first album featured yeah. Babyface. Yeah. Um, which actually got nominated for a Grammy. Yeah. How did that feel? Your first time out. Yeah. Nominated. I mean, a, I mean, you didn't win, unfortunately, but you got nominated well, your I first mean, time out. It's incredible. The whole thing was I, I went into the studio one day with him at a, actually at his house. We were recording. Um, and he had the song Someone to Love. He played me the track. He played me the song. I loved it. And so, but he, he didn't have any lead vocals recorded on it. He basically just had like a little scratch vocal that had the lyrics to let me know how it went. But he's like, okay, so let's record it. So I went and I, I recorded the first verse, right? And he's like, okay, I love it. Now I'm gonna do my part. So I said, okay, cool. So I can learn how to do the part, right? I'm thinking he's just laying the part so I can learn the melody. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, 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 I'm gonna sing the second verse. I was like, <laughs> like a duet? He's like, yeah, now think about it. I'm, this is the guy who I used to imitate his vocals for people in high school, like try to really sound as much of like him as possible uh, to impress girls, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, and, and it, one of the most influential vocalists, just like Marvin Gaye or Michael Jackson, he's up there, you know, for me. Yeah. So to get him <laughs> at 19 or 20, whatever it was, to sing on my first record that I ever put out was very, very much, you couldn't tell me, I mean, you had to pinch me, you know what I mean? To let me know, like, okay, dude, this is happening. And um, yeah, I was very, very much in awe of the whole thing, let alone we got a Grammy nom, you know, for that. And, um, you know, the movie was in the Bad Boy soundtrack and all that. So right away, it was sort of like, okay, we're off to the races, you know? So, well, I mean, you guys sound kind of similar I mean, on it that was, song. It was evident, you know, on that song, definitely yeah. want to show that from the jump. This is the guy who is sort of like the foundation for what I do, you know. Yeah. Um, in R&B, there's only so many pillars that are really holding up, you know, the foundation. It's like the foundation, you know. Uh, so I, I'm one of those guys who likes to go back and show, show my influence because I didn't start off wanting to be an artist. I started off wanting to be a producer and I use my vocals as a technique to, as a tool to kind of get my songs and my production to artists. So if I wrote a song for Luther Vandross, I sang the song, dun, 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 you know, in a, in a Luther vibe and I, I can do Luther vibe, you know, I could do a Babyface vibe, I could do a Ralph Tresvant or a Johnny Gill or, you know what I mean? Because I'm a big fan of R&B music. So it was interesting people caught that that glimpse of my influence with Babyface and they instantaneously thought that's the way his voice sounds on everything he sings, you know? And right, which it isn't. Which is not. Yeah. And so it, it took records like, um, you know, They Don't Know, which was very, very much, I think it still to this day is sort of like the song I think people best know me for and, you know, really, they come to the show and they sing that the loudest, you know what I mean? <laughs> and that was a song I sort of like really spread my wings and, and, and got, got to uh, shine in my own right and stepped out, uh, out, out mm -hmm. of the shadow of Babyface. Well, I mean, you, know, you mentioned that you were writing, you know, for a few people. You said Tony Braxton, mm -hmm. um, Color Me Bad, mm -hmm. but also Michael Jackson? Well, I didn't write the song, but I had the, the, uh, the pleasure of working with his, uh, his voice in the studio um, and getting to, uh, we were managed by the same manager, uh, Sandy Gallen and Jim Mori. And, and Who also managed Michael Jackson? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. <laughs> it's pretty was, much as high as you can get. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was, you know, in the office a lot and uh, it'd be like, okay, oh, we gotta cut this meeting short. Mike is on his way in. And I'm like, okay, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, I mean, because of that, it was, a cool opportunity for you know for me to work with uh, the song "You Are Not Alone" that R. Kelly wrote, but mm -hmm. I, I had the opportunity to be the only person uh, besides Jimmy T Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis to uh, to get to remix it. Hmm. Well, I think Frankie Knuckles did a house mix, but I was I did the official remix um, for it, and it was really cool because you know I remember him calling the you know the studio to check on me and just say, you know I like the mix and thanks a lot, man, for doing this. And I'm just like. Incredible. Can't wait to shake your hand, meet you in person. And then, of course, I met him at the Brit Awards. Ah. Uh, Jim Moore brought me backstage and I, I met Mike and got to shake his hand. And 
you know, uh, that was really cool. Yeah. Dope, dope. So the first album comes out, and uh, you know, I get, I'm looking at the charts now. It got up to number seven mm -hmm. on the top 200 charts, mm -hmm. number four on the R&B charts, and mm -hmm. it goes platinum. Yeah. So you're platinum right out the gate. <laughs> Grammy nomination. I mean, you're off to the races at this point. Yeah. So then it's out time for album number two. Yeah. For a cool relax. Yeah. And um, Babyface is still in the mix. Yeah, absolutely. But this is where I, 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 like I was saying, I was more or less spreading my wings and really trying to step outside of the, you know, being overshadowed by my influence of. You know, that I, that Babyface had, you know, mm -hmm. on me. and um, you know, I I think that that was sort of like something that began to spread a little bit uh, faster than I wanted it to, in a way where all of a sudden now I wasn't my own artist. I felt very very much like okay, I've been working all this time to be a musician and a producer, not this sort of pseudo you know, replica artist, you the, know what The I white mean? baby face. Yeah, exactly, the white baby <laughs> face, exactly. White um, face. And you know, exactly. I mean, my, <laughs> right. you know what? Uh, ev everyone who works with him, um, whether it be Tevin Campbell, Johnny Gill, uh, Tony Braxton, Karen White, um, you know, after Seven, they all have the the polishing of his style on mm -hmm. their records, um, and when you know when I got my chance to work with him, I wanted nothing but to do just the exact same thing. So when people hear that, they hear they hear me doing you know very very much his realm, his vibe. But when they hear me do, they don't know, and they hear all my other music. Are you still down with Tupac? Yeah. Uh, there was no denying that there was more to it than just that, you know, and Cool Relax was sort of my way of being able to let people know everything that else that came with me, you know, um, all the other influence. Hip hop is a huge influence in, you know, in my style. And um, that leads me into, you know, the, the collaboration I had on the Cool Relax album with, with, uh, with Tupac, which is, well, you know. I, mean, yeah. I want to I wanna first talk about They Don't Know. Yeah, for sure. Because that was really the biggest song you ever put out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you put it together, did you know right away that it was going to be a monster like that or no? Funny enough, when I turned that song in, it was um, it was looked at as sort of like, okay, this will be a cool song for the album. It wasn't at all like, oh, man, we got to smash. And I thought it was absolutely my best song ever, you know. <laughs> it, I felt like it was saying a lot for me. Like everything we're talking about right now, about kind of wanting to be my own artist and not really wanting to be compared so much so anymore, you know, like, okay, cool. Like I, I, I live that influence to the death. You know what I mean? I'll ride that to the death, but I am my own artist. And so this song kind of said that statement for me in another way. But at the same time, it was also kind of like, all right, haters back, back, back up. <laughs> Cause I came, you know, to tell you some, you know, some truth right here. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And it still kind of like works for me like that to this day. It really is sort of like an anthem that I, I still at you know at this age I'm I'm looking at it like man this is really something I need to continue to tell myself you know. I mean a hell of a song. Thank you. Hell of a song. Like I was listening to your catalog you know before we started today and it was like oh yeah I remember this shit this was <laughs> <laughs> this was all over the place when it came out yeah and yeah. that was uh, yeah I remember like. Cause I remember the, the baby face collab before, but mm -hmm. since I'm not really an R and B guy, yeah, it kind of for me it kind of came and went, yeah. But but that that song just had like a staying power. Man, thank you, man. Yeah. Well, it was produced by my man Tim Kelly and Bob Robinson, and um, you know I wrote it, and uh, it was it was it came at a time where I was definitely going through some things relationship wise, where it it fit you know both for me relationship wise and also as a statement to sort of like everyone that I was creatively surrounded by like hey don't listen to what people say because at the end of the day it's what's going on in my heart that you know no one knows about but the people that are closest to me so yeah 